Hey, I'm Matt Hudgens, and he's Dave Mulvaney, and this is Profitability MD. Dave, how you doing today, buddy? Man, I'm doing great. How are you today? Man, life's pretty good. Uh, kicking into spring. Heck, it's almost June. It's uh, coming right up. Feels like summer here in Florida. Yeah, we're not quite there yet. We got a little cold spell. But I tell you what, it's being quarantined, I, I kind of have the time frame of March still in my head. You know, it feels like that almost. When I was locked up. Yeah. That's when I was locked up. Hey, we're going to do episode 74 today, and I'm going to share a couple charts here. Uh, know your numbers to be profitable. So we always talk about the importance of knowing your numbers to be profitable. Uh, I thought today we talked about three key numbers that you really need to know that can help you uh, create exponential growth. Um, so I'll share my things and, and uh, my little screen, and we could uh, make some comments on it. All right. Uh, I can go into this little part right here. Do, 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 do. This is part of a bigger uh, thing that we have, but we're just going to cover a couple pieces right now. All right. Um, so we were going to talk today, uncover hidden revenue using your profit and loss statement. So basically how much income and your expenses are, right? How to create a P&L from scratch if you don't have one. Oh, actually, we'll probably come back to that. Here it is. Understanding the three key numbers in your profit and loss statement. There are only three key numbers you really need to know because you can use those numbers to create exponential growth, right? Yes, absolutely. All right. Well, that's a different one. So I'm popping over here. Okay. So the profit and loss statement, we know the basics, right? We got the revenue, basically how much income you're making. We got your, uh, they call it co uh, cost of goods sold, but basically think of that. I like variable cost. Uh, we'll talk about the examples here in a second, Dave. Yep. Uh, from that, so you take a revenue minus your variable cost, and that gives you what they call your gross profit. So that's your gross profit, um, gross profits percentage. And then we get overhead, your fixed cost. And we'll talk about these in a second. And after you take out all those costs, your variable cost and your fixed cost, you basically get your net income or your bottom line and what that percentage is, how profitable you are as a percentage of revenue. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to give a little example. Revenue, $300,000. Your cost of goods sold is 180. That means your gross profit would be 120,000. Or your gross profit percentage in this little example is 40%. So basically 120 divided by 300 gives you a gross profit. Now you got to take out your overhead because you got your, your overhead expenses, which gives you an X profit of uh, $60,000 or 20%. So you sold 300,000, you're able to take home a 20% profit, uh, $60,000, okay? That's what we use in our example. Uh, only three numbers you need to focus on are, here they are, the three key numbers, the revenue, the cost of goods sold, or the variable cost, and the overhead. Those are the three numbers that you can control, and those are the three numbers that you can have the biggest impact on. Uh, only these three numbers can have direct impact. Um, so we know what the revenue is. Now I'm going to give you the description of it, right? So the revenue is 300000 Basically, that's how much money we made, right? Yep. net revenue, um, uh, selling the goods and the services in order to cost of goods sold is what we like to call variable costs. And, and you had some great examples. So here, you know, we're talking about your commissions. If you pay a salesperson a commission, that is a variable cost because right, the more that person sells, the more you pay them, the less they sell. It might be a constant. Yeah. Percentage. Unless you pay them through, uh, through payroll, then it becomes an expense. So then it would fall under your fixed cost or overhead. So that that's, you know, there's it, these are, again, these are the three things. So if it's not going to fall on your, under your cost of goods sold, it's going to fall in the other area. So that's exactly right. I mean, direct expenses. Yeah. Yeah. But so, I was thinking like you, you know, some of the stuff that you were messing around with, right. You, you had some shipping costs, you had to buy some stuff and ship it from A to B. That's a variable cost because it's based on how many, how much of the product you ship, right. Uh, the material itself, if you make stuff, right. The, the raw materials, how much that costs packaging, how much it costs you to, wrap it up to send it out. Those are all variable costs because all that depends on how much you sell. Yeah. Right. Then we got into, um, we talk about commissions to salespeople. So typically the variable cost or the cost of goods sold increases the more you sell, right? So if you sell $600,000 of, of a product, you're going to have more variable costs, right? Mm -hmm. If you, if you sell 300,000, right? So, um, but interesting thing is there are a lot of businesses that don't have, cost of goods sold, variable costs, uh, business coaches, financial advisors, law practices, right? It's just the, you're paying the lawyer and his staff, right? Their staff, his or her consultant, accountants, accountant, you're just paying the accountant and their staff, business brokers. You and I have dealt with business brokers. It's basically this them selling the chiropractors. It's the chiropractor and the staff, 
right? So a lot of businesses don't even have a variable cost. They just have that fixed cost. So the fixed cost is like you were just saying, everything else, right? That's stuff that, that you have to pay regardless of how much you make in a sale, right? So you got to pay your rent every month. You got to pay your insurance. You got to pay utilities, office supplies. Then we get into salaries, like you were just talking about. Their base salary would be, you look commission salesperson. You might pay them a base salary. That's what it costs no matter how much they sell. That's a fixed cost. The variable cost is the commission component of that, right? Yep. Um, uh, it says auto expenses, janitorial expenses. A fix refers to the fact that these costs re occur no matter how much, no matter how much. So we'd use that lawyer as an example, right? Or use the dentist as an example, right? The dentist has the hygienist and the front office and the rent and the air conditioning and the utilities. That is fixed no matter how much the dentist produces, right? Yeah, and these are these are the costs right now that are that so many businesses have faced during COVID that these are the things that they're trying to cover, of oh, course. Because absolutely, absolutely. We'll, we'll come back to that exactly right. But if you can cut some of these, that's what it gets into. The typically, um, so what we're saying on, these are the only three numbers you need to focus on, the revenue number, the variable costs, costs of goods sold, or your overhead or the fixed costs, how much it costs you no matter what you open the doors or not. And that's what the PPP loan is trying to address is a lot of those fixed costs, right? Um, so we talked about this before in another episode, the profit growth calculator that says just 10% increase in five main areas of your business could increase your profits by 62%. That was basically, you get more leads, you get more conversions, you get more transactions, higher prices, more profits, a 10% increase in the, each of those five areas actually leads to a 62% increase in profit. So let's pause on this slide for a minute, because I want to, I want to draw a, a attention to the fact that so many people think that you know, growing a business is about like these big leaps and bounds. I want to grow 100% a year. Well, let's just say you want to grow 50% a year. What you really don't care about is growing 50% a year. What you care about is growing your profits 50% yes. a year. If you can grow your profits 50% a year, what, what Matt is showing right now on the screen is that you can make small incremental differences across these, these five areas um, to have a 62% increase in profit. And that's huge. That's where, um, you know, that, that's what you want to do is you want to, you want to make incremental increases, get more leads, a 10% increase in leads, get more conversions, you know, a 10% increase in conversions, et cetera. Et cetera. Just, exactly. Right. And that's really what we, you and I do in our coaching in our, in our yeah. mastermind group and that type of stuff. But I was trying to cut it to even more of a financial aspect, say, okay, there's the five things that you and I work on when we're doing coaching with people, but I can even make it simpler. How about what would happen if we, in this example, just increase revenue by 5%. So, so we just took one of our strategies to increase revenue by 5%. What does that do to the bottom line of this example? So that $300,000 business is now going to sell 315,000, right? Now it's the variable cost, the cost of goods sold varies, right? But in this case, it really didn't cost us any more money, right? So we increased the profit margin. I'll, I'll flip through this. That just says the fixed, the fixed cost stayed the same. The overhead is 60,000. So a 5% increase in revenue is basically a $15,000 increase in this example. And in this example, it goes right through the bottom line. You went from $60,000 to $75,000. Okay? So it went straight through the bottom line. So increase in the revenue goes right to the bottom line. Everything else staying the same. Now, this is kind of interesting. So if those three numbers, the second number was cost of goods sold or variables. What if we lowered our cost of goods sold by 5%? So remember, those are the variable costs that talks about how much the commissions, the materials, the well, supply. And some, you know, and, and if you're watching this and you're in a product-based business, for instance, I own multiple product-based businesses. So yeah. I have an LED lighting company. So a portion of my cost of goods sold are the underlying LED lights. Well, yeah. if I'm going to increase my revenue, um, there's a couple ways I can do that. I could just, like Matt said, I could actually charge 5% more for the same product. So my cost of goods in sold didn't go up. That's I, I'm just I wanted to bring that out because if somebody was in the products business and they're watching this, they're going, "Well, how can I increase my revenue without increasing my underlying cost? Because I got to buy more product." Let's just say you did a price increase. Let's just say a five percent price increase. Just 
just for this. Absolutely. This. That's the number one thing. We'll talk about that in another podcast would be, sure. that's the number one thing you do, just a 5% price. Increase. I was just, I, I was picturing an objection coming up uh, that somebody might have, and I wanted to cover that objection. Oh, that's good. That's actually really good because we'll talk about that in the next one. Uh, this is talking about, all right, so let's say you can't decrease the cost of those lights that you are shipping in from wherever, but maybe you could negotiate a volume discount for shipping, right? Maybe you can do a volume discount for, for larger orders. Maybe you can do the packaging because when you get them here and you repackage them to send them out in smaller batches, maybe somehow there's some cost savings on that side, right? So I don't know your lighting business per se, but certainly we should go through and kind of find these little 1% savings here and there that might add up to a 5%. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, pause. Let's say we're talking about shipping. I mean, yeah. that's, a good, that's a good example. There are currently, there are, um, when you get into bigger groups, uh, sometimes there are, are items available that allow you better discounts, like with UPS or things like that. And so um, it allows you to sometimes, uh, many companies charge a, uh, what do you call it, shipping and handling, if you will. Yeah. And, but if you can make the underlying shipping costs go down while still charging the higher, you can make more margin on the shipping. So once again, you can lower your cost of goods sold, um, even moving the same amount of product through the same channels, just by maybe joining forces with others, et cetera, um, to get exactly. that. And we just had that like two years ago when oil prices were so high and gas prices were so high, uh, you could charge an extra, an extra fee for shipping, right? At the, right. Uh, now it's actually the complete opposite. You, you, you're making more money because shipping is less expensive than it was two years ago in the higher fuel costs. Yeah. Um, so this example, hey, we're just lowering the cost of goods sold. If I could just do that and I didn't change our revenue, what does that do to the bottom line? So because my uh, variable costs are a little less, 5% less, now my gross profit's a little higher. My fixed cost is still 60,000. So what did that do to my bottom line? So uh, a 5% increase, decrease in your cost of goods sold, your variable costs, made me nine thousand dollars in this example or uh basically oops sorry that's uh, a 15 percent increase by the way in uh so uh, in profit five percent decrease in this example your numbers are going to vary based on what you're but this is the formula you guys can put this together yourselves right your own p l statement but you're exactly right it's a 15 percent increase in profit just for a five percent reduction in your cost of goods sold so then we said all right well what if we could just lower the overhead by five percent that's your fixed cost that's your rent your utilities your salaries uh, all that stuff uh, janitorial costs. So same thing in this example, revenues of 300,000, cost of goods sold of 180, uh, our gross profits 120,000. Now, instead of a $60,000 in fixed cost, what if I could decrease it by 5%? So that's $57,000 uh, in fixed costs, $3,000 savings. That goes right to my bottom line. So it's a $63,000 in profit based on a 5% savings in um, cost of, I mean, an overhead. So, but here's the truth of it. The real power is uh, funny is if, what if you could, here's the exponential part. You know, we, we tease that. What if you had, what are the three numbers you need to know? These are the three numbers, revenue, cost of goods sold, and your uh, net profit or overhead fixed costs. And then if you could decrease each of them by 5%, this is what really is cool. So if you got a 5% increase in profits, I'm sorry, revenue, 5% mm -hmm. didn't decrease in your cost of goods sold, right? Now we get a 5% decrease in our overhead and then it goes right to the bottom line. And now that's a 45% a increase in your profit. It takes your profit from 60,000 to 87,000. So that's $27,000 profit or 45%. So just like what you just said literally beforehand, this is the exponential growth. If we are just tweaking, surely we could come up with a way to grow your revenue 5%. Surely we can, uh, variable costs lower them by 5%. Surely we can lower the overhead costs, the fixed costs by 5%. Those three tweaks lead to a 45% increase in profits. And, <laughs> and if you want to get really creative, um, if you took the extra money and you put your uh, kids on payroll and you put it away for their college fund, the amount you could save on taxes. Now we're decreasing their taxes. You're exactly right. So, I mean, you could uh, literally, you could almost pocket the entire increase in profitability. Um, the, the, the things that most business owners don't think about. Right. Is exactly right. They, they think about this big, I got to, I got to grow, grow, yes. grow, grow. And it's got to be big, right? It does. That's a 45% increase. And you really didn't change anything in a big way. 
Yeah, you, 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 these are small incremental ch uh, changes. And that's exactly, you just change these three numbers by 5%, revenue, your cost of goods sold, or your variable cost, and your overhead, or your fixed cost. Just change those three numbers about 5%, it's a 45%. Now your numbers might even be greater, depending on what you have. Let's go back to the lawyer example. He doesn't even have a variable cost, he just has fixed costs. So he could lower his fixed costs by, by a dramatic amount. Maybe he, whatever. Uh, so then it's interesting to think about, like you just said, what a lot of guys think is they, they need, oh, well, what I really need is a new marketing program. I really need new revenues. So I was trying to show that example in this next slide. What about a marketing program? What would it take to generate $27,000 more profit in this example? In order to do that, I'd have to get a bunch more revenue. There's a whole math behind that because of my gross profit is at 40%. I don't want to tell you all the math, but it ends up being, you'd have to have a, a, a 20, I think it's a 20, what's going to tell me here in a second, a uh, 27% increase. Yeah. Uh, you'd have to increase your revenue by $67,500, which is a 23% increase in revenue. All right. So if, if we just, if we did our exponential growth, our exponential growth said the three key numbers, revenue, let's increase it by 5%. Variable cost, decrease it by 5%. A fixed cost, decrease it by 5%. That's a 45% increase in profit. In order to get a 45% increase in profit and all we wanted, and if we just handled the revenue, we'd have to increase our revenue by 23%. And, uh, and I'm, I'm sure you have a slide for this, and we didn't calculate the cost of what it, what it took to increase the revenue. There you go. That only assumes the marketing program is free. Marketing is free, and marketing is never free. It's never free. It's so exactly right. One of the, uh, for instance, I'm in the LED lighting business. Okay, so part of your overhead is your energy bill. Okay, so yeah. these are one of the things that I talk about. Okay, you, you convert from conventional lighting to LED lighting, and you're going to save 50 to 70% on, on those fixed costs. And in many times you can structure financing out of those and actually pay out of your savings so that you're immediately to the positive. So perhaps that's one way you can make those adjustments. And those, when, whenever you can adjust your overhead and your cost of goods sold without spending more money on advertising, without that goes straight to the bottom line. So that, Yours is a great example. Like that is the way that you sell those lights, right? Yeah. You we say, sell return on investment, of course. Yeah, return on investment. Look, when, when you put in our lights and our fixtures, it'll decrease your fixed costs, your overhead costs, and you guys can take their numbers and plug in your lights, right? And, and calculate how much of a savings that is and say, hey, look, this actually pays for itself. What was it? How long does it pay? to pay back for those lights. Well, we don't just talk about energy savings alone. A typical is under three years, but we also, then you have, you don't have any people on ladders and lifts, so that's a variable cost now. Uh, there because you go, to labor, change out the lights, you mean? Yeah, especially if the, the lights are parking lot and you have to hire an electrician, and they come out and they, oh, they yeah. the boom lift is $400. So all of those are part of the variable cost of owning lighting. Um, electricity costs, of course, on average, increases about 5% a year on average over, uh, you look at it, uh, electricity costs in 10 year windows. So all of those things, and there's tax code 179 savings for investing into your business. So you, yep. you also get tax deductions for those type of investments. So, and that's just one type of say, I mean, there are, you can, you can buy a new copy machine and, and reduce your costs. You can, there are a lot of different things that you can use to reduce overhead, even though you're spending money, especially if you can take the, the amount saved and amortize it over a period of time. Now you've got tax deductions as well as uh, reductions in overhead. Those are, yeah. these are exactly what we're talking but, about. But this is how you guys can sell the lighting is literally by using their numbers against them, right? Use, use your customer's numbers and say, look, you're going to pay yourself back in Three years, two years, a year and a half, right? We've got a I job tool that. that does all of, does in depth, goes in depth to every penny saved, the return on investment, what it means long term over a 12 year life, 15 year life of the product, how much you're going to save. It's astronomical. And there's many energy saving products that, that do that. Um, and that's perfect. That's perfect. But the point of this was saying, look, if you're going to know three numbers in your business, the three to know are your revenues, your variable costs, and your fixed costs, right? And, and, and we're in a great time to be doing this now during our little crisis. But, and then the thought process is, hey, instead of just looking at the revenue and I need to grow my revenue by 23%, right? Instead, it's no, you know, if I just tweak, if I just tweaked, if I just got a 5% increase in revenue, if I just got a 5% decrease in my cost of goods sold or uh, my fixed, remember the example? 
goes here from 60,000 to eight, it's a 45% increase in my profit, right? So let's, let's uh, talk about this from the, from the lens of COVID right now too, Matt, because a lot of people know that their revenue is going to be down this year. So, but your overhead is probably going to be down too, because you, if, let's just say we're probably never going to go back to normal. Um, what we consider the same normal, just like after 9-11. It used to be my wife would walk me to all the way to the gate when I'd get on a plane. That didn't happen after 9-11 anymore. So nothing ever goes back to completely normal after something like this. So maybe things are going to change. Maybe you will not be able to have as many employees. So your overhead is actually going to go down. This is what we're trying to do in this episode is really get you focusing on the bottom line number, the profitability of your business. That's what the show is about, profitability. So make adjustments in, the, in, the, in other areas and the cost of goods sold and overhead if, because you need that bottom line number to survive. That's the number that is the most important number on your, on your P&L statement. Yeah. And that's what's going to matter. And we've got, so how, but how do we do that? That's where the, we could talk about uh, six different ways to increase your revenue. We're going to talk about six different ways to decrease your variable costs. We're going to talk about 12 different ways to decrease your overhead. So we can do that in our, in our future podcasts here. Uh, right now, this was just the setup, which was the three most important numbers that you need to know are your revenue, your cost of goods sold, and your, and your overhead, your fixed cost, your variable cost. And from that, you can determine or create, let's call it exponential growth by making small changes. This example of 5% revenue, 5% decrease in variable cost, 5% decrease in fixed cost leads to a 45% increase in profit. Your numbers will vary, but, but you can plug those into this little chart, this little formula and figure it out for yourself. Um, but that's, that's what, this is where you and I, uh, what you and I do in our mastermind group. This is what we do in our coaching programs. This is what you and I do is to focus on the bottom line. And it's not as dramatic as you might think it might be that, gosh, I need a 23% increase in my revenues. I need a 40% increase in my revenues. That's not what it's about. A lot of times it's about the fundamentals, the blocking and tackling to kind of get the basics done. I know uh, numbers aren't the most exciting thing, but I think our guys, uh, our viewers need to know, here are the basics. If you just had to know three numbers, these are it. Your revenue, your variable costs, your fixed costs. And from that, if you could play around with those and, and figure out, now you're knowing your numbers, now you're knowing the bottom line. And like you said, coming out of this crisis, uh, this is what's going to matter. How much am I taking home? What's my net, net profit going to be? And how do I uh, continue to, to, to get through this? And we'll talk about the future revenues. Like I said, six ways to grow revenues, six ways to save uh, variable costs, and then uh, 12 different ways to reduce overhead. So that's what we talk about in coaching. But I wanted to set this one up. So pretty good. What, what else you got for me? Man, well, see, that's real good. And, and I'm going to segue into, you know, we, uh, we have a mastermind that, um, that we're starting. And, and I think it's critical for people to understand the next 90 days as we come out of COVID, how critical to your business the next 90 days are. And, and the thing about the next 90 days, when, you know, you and I both, when, when we both, everybody went through, you know, the last debacle in 09, um, it really started in, in my opinion, in around 07, uh, because the financial market started to, to, to change and it affected my business then. And like you, we saw the mastermind group and um, I've had mentors and been part of mastermind groups uh, ever since that time, because you, in my opinion, look, you can do it alone, but why? When you, when you can put your head together with someone else and, and, and it makes you stronger mentally uh, because you're like, wow, I never thought of it that way. So, No, and that's a great point. We talked about this in, in, that, in, in the email we were talking about, which was literally that's what happened to me. My, my, my revenue went down by, by greater than 50%. My profits went down 50%. And, and I had gotten uh, lazy, complacent, whatever the words you want to use. And, and from that, I had to, I had to get, I had to get going again. I, I joined a group. I joined a coaching group, a mastermind group. And in a very short period of time, I was on my way to doubling my profits. I, what I like to say is literally making more money and working less. Literally, I did that by seeking out a mastermind group, seeking out a group of people that have already done it. People that have, that are, are, are like minded individuals that are, that are looking to, make more money and, and, and work less, right? Pay less in taxes. And, and I'm glad you just revealed part of your story. Uh, my, back in 07, when, when I knew we were in trouble. So at that time I had an electrical manufacturing company and um, it was in early 07, 
when we were, we were trying to get a $1.3 million deal financed on a publicly traded company. And they came back and they said they want, the bank said they wanted a personal guarantee from the board of directors. And I can literally remember talking to, to my team going, we're in trouble. When a publicly traded company and they're asking the board of directors for a personal guarantee on a relatively small loan, $1.3 million, giant company, I can't say who they are, but I said, we're in trouble. Something's wrong with the banking industry. And at that time, 80% of our system sales were financed. And when we, so we, I had to get my head around, how am I going to navigate this financial world? Because if we drop 80% in sales, um, we we're going to be in big trouble. So we were both facing some very tough times and I needed input from others because I realized if, if not, what would normally, a, a lot of entrepreneurs, if you put your head in the sand and pretend it's not happening, it's going to happen anyway. You need to be proactive and, and push, you know, in, in saying, okay, I know this is happening. Now what can I do about it? And that's where other, other, other people outside, like they say, you can't read the label from inside the jar. You need some people that are outside the jar to be able to kind of say, oh, well, have you looked at it this way? Have you looked at it this way? A mastermind isn't a bunch of people telling you what to do. It's a bunch of people giving you input who are like-minded individuals giving you input so that your smart mind, the entrepreneur that you are, can make the adjustments, the necessary adjustments that affect you and your business. Yeah, exactly right. And this is one of the exercises we would do as a group, right? Yeah. Go through these numbers by yourself and then share them with the group, however much you want to share and say, oh my gosh, how am I going to lower my overhead? Oh my gosh, how, how would you lower your, right? Because we we'll have different groups and different businesses that'll be able to share their, oh, here's, here's a great way to, to reduce that kind of cost. Here's a great way to get that repriced, right? Exactly. And this, that's, the other, that's one more thing about a mastermind that's so unique is that it's always, uh, these are people you, you learn to trust. You don't have to worry. There's non-disclosures. Um, some of the biggest multi, multi millionaires that you can picture are in masterminds and they're revealing their secrets in that group. Why? Because typically people who join a mastermind, they stay with it for many years and you guys are all, everybody's making more money over a period of time and before it's long, but you trust, you can trust the other people. And that's the other thing is it's, it's a place of safety and trust where you don't have to worry about your trade secrets getting out. We never put competitors in the same mastermind. No, but this, this is funny you say this because I was literally talking to, to a, a prospective member to, to, our, to our mastermind group that, oh, do we get referrals out of this? And I said, you know what you get is you get collaboration, right? You get collaboration, which is much better because that, that will be referrals and those referrals will be of higher caliber, but you'll probably do a joint venture with somebody from the group, right? We do, the group is not trying to sell to each other, but, but, but I'm, invariably you'll do some business with each of them or you'll refer clients to each other or you'll do a joint venture with each other. So, I'm about to do a joint venture in another mastermind that I'm in. I'm about to do a, jo a joint venture with somebody else in that mastermind group. Exactly what you're talking exactly about. Exactly right. So it's the collaboration. This is much better than some, I mean, you're going to learn stuff and uh, implement and it's collaboration, it's, it's, it is, which is much more powerful. Exactly. Much more. So if you want to learn more about our mastermind group, uh, reach out to, to, to me and Dave. So you can find me, Matt Hudgens, over at LinkedIn. Or you can find me at 10xprofitblueprint.com. You can find our YouTube channel, Profitability MD. We also have the website, Profitability MD. And then, of course, we got this podcast, which is Profitability MD, wherever you get your podcast. Yeah, and you can actually email us. Uh, you can email Matt at matt at profitabilitymd.com and Dave at profitabilitymd.com. Those are pretty easy email addresses to, so you can, you're more than welcome to email us if you want to talk to, to us. We'll get on a, a three way call um, and discuss, um, you know, see if you're a good fit, see if we're a good fit uh, for a mastermind. So, Matt, good show today. All right, and, buddy, this uh, is good. We'll cover more. All right, we'll all see right, you man. next week. Take care.